if you set up your flight and you launch it and put it instead of flying, it crashes to the desktop, there's a fix. Actually, there's two fixes. The first one we're going to talk about is changing your settings to a lower setting when you start up and then changing them back to a higher setting when you launch your flight. So this is a lower end PC. I only have 16 uh, gigabytes of memory. But you notice I have it on a custom setting with high uh, settings set up. Uh, but that causes it to crash. So if I go over here and you'll see there's a terrain level of detail. I'm going to slide that down to 10. I'm going to come down here to object level of detail and slide that one down to 10. Now you can also play around with this, but I can even leave this on the high setting, even on this lower end PC. Now once you do that, all you have to do is apply and save. You come down here to the bottom, click on that, it'll say apply graphics settings, okay, and you say go back, and now we're going to go launch the flight, just like we always do. Now this one here, I'm going to launch uh, a regular aircraft. I'm going to go to the uh, Statue of Liberty. To do that, I'm just going to go over here to search. Uh, I can do it from an airport over here and choose like a, a very dense one, but I want to be right there in New York Harbor. So I'm going to launch from the Statue of Liberty. So I just do that in the search here. And then once I get that in there, there it is. I click there to launch it. And boom, uh, we're there. So uh, go ahead and uh, fly. Go click on that. And instead of the crash, you should have it actually spawn fine and uh, start up. And then you'll end up uh, something uh, like this instead of that. So, But we're in low res mode. So how do we fix it now? Well, it's pretty simple. You simply uh, press your escape key anywhere in the flight. Uh, you just hit escape and you'll go back uh, to the control panel. And we're going to do that. And we're going to go into general again. We'll go back to those very same settings now and we're going to turn them up. So if I go over here to graphics again, and you'll see down here, I'm going to turn them up as high as I want. But right now, I'm going to put these back up to 100 on both of those. Do that. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to hit Apply and Save. It changes the graphic settings. Say Go Back. And now, uh, if we go back to Resume, you should be flying in high resolution mode. And it'll look a lot better. And then, if you don't like it, uh, if maybe it's too high, too low, a little jerky, whatever, uh, you can still go back any number of times you want by hitting Escape, going right back here again, and changing the settings until you get a desired result. A combination of... Uh, high or medium or low, whatever you want to do, that runs best on your PC. Another thing that might be affecting the performance is if you have a PC that only has like around 16 uh, gigabytes of memory, like this one I have it installed on. So what you want to do is open up the System Properties box, and you go down here to uh, where it says Performance, and then click on the Settings. And once you do that, another window will show up. And this tells you how to configure Windows automatically. But here's the advanced. We want to look at the paging file. And you see I have a 7,000 uh, megabyte one. And that's because I've already created one uh, other than my regular one I have. I have one on my game SSD uh, with 4,000 uh, megabytes. Now creating that allows us to extend virtual memory uh, of that 16 uh, gig and adds to it so that uh, the software, including Flight Simulator, has more memory to work with. So when I create swap files, I always keep them the same value so Windows doesn't spend time uh, making them larger or smaller as it uses it. So I just put four in here because that's what I felt was right uh, for I needed additional memory. And you might have done this already sometime in your system, but this additional file will allow Flight Simulator to do some more stuff. And I put it on my fastest drive. And sure enough, uh, I will go ahead and uh, save all that. You have to click on OK. Uh, and then I would simply relaunch the program and try it out. And pretty soon you'll see this high resolution loading of dense areas because you have enough memory to deal with it. So there you have it. Two different ways you should be able to fix the problem of Microsoft Flight Simulator crashing upon starting your flight. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want to get more, just subscribe to Old Guy Geek. You can also follow me at Facebook or Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.